Hello, welcome. Try this problem out, press pause, and then play it when you're ready to solve it with me. Okay, so we're told that we're given the parent function p of x equals the cosine of x. And the idea of a parent function, of course, is a basis, a way to think about this function. So uh, if we're thinking about cosine, we're doing a bunch of stuff to it. For example, here we have some transformations we're adding to the input and then we're subtracting the output. When we do that, we have to have a, have a way of thinking about this function. And what we do is we think back okay, to the parent function. What does that look like? So I'll show this in, in two ways. So first of all, I mean, if we assume that we have a, here's a rough sketch of a graph for cosine. And I can do better than that. Let me get my line tool out. So let's say we have our y-axis here and our x-axis. Um, we want to sketch our parent function. Cosine at 0 is at 1. And then after 2 pi radians, it returns to 1. OK, so point here and a point here. Uh, cosine represents the x value of a unit circle. So I'm thinking at well, 180 degrees, cosine is at negative 1, so down here. And then halfway between these two points, we have this is pi over 2. And this is 3 pi over 2. Right, that's 90 degrees and 270. The x value at those points, the cosine, is 0. So here's 0 and here is 0. So this is our parent function. In other words, if I'm thinking about cosine, in my mind, I might be thinking about this graph right here. And this is p of x, the parent function, equals the cosine of x. Now, if I just kind of do another graph over that, the idea is this next graph is going to be a transformation of the original parent function. So when we add to the input of a function, we actually move left a units, right? And that's for all functions. If you add to your input, it actually goes left. And then if we subtract from our function, from the output of the function, it moves down. So essentially, it should go left and then down. And how far should it go? Well, it should go left a units and down b units. And this is something that we talk extensively about in function transformations. Uh, but the basic idea, let's start with the output first. Here we're subtracting from the output. So what do I mean? Well, initially the output was just the cosine of x. Now we subtract from that. In other words, we take our output, whatever it was, and subtract from it. So we lower the outputs. But with the inputs, when we add to the input, one way to think about it that's kind of nice is to think not about adding the actual not about adding x to the values of the graph itself. In other words, I'm not moving x up. I'm moving the graph up. So in other words, if this is my graph, this piece, let's if I can get both at once there, and this piece, I move the graph to the right, a units. right? I'm going to drag the graph over. So I'm going to drag this over, try to grab it. I move the graph over, a units, effectively moving the actual function backwards. That wasn't very convincing. Um, but the idea is, let me let me show you right here. So if we have a graph, let's say that this is our y-axis. I'm going to draw it now, rough sketch. And then here's our cosine, really rough sketch. OK. So the idea is that <clears throat> if we take our graph, this line and this line, and that's what we're actually moving up, if we move that up, effectively we move the wave back, right? So the wave itself moves to the left because it's the coordinate plane that's moving to the right. So if you add to the input, essentially add to the part that's in a parentheses, we move that to the right. If you don't like that, there are other ways to explain it. There are algebraic waves, uh, but I'm not going to talk about it for too long in this video other than to say, let me give you one quick example. Let's say you have the cosine, oops, that's too hard to write with. Let's say we have the cosine of x as our parent function. And it's called p of x here. So let's say we plug in pi. So where is the cosine at pi radians? Well, the cosine of pi right, is negative 1. So when you plug in pi radians, the cosine is negative 1. What if we did, let's say, the cosine of x plus pi over 2? Right? What would happen then? Let's call this our new function, n of x. So here, this is positive x plus pi over 2. 
effectively we're going to move our whole graph backwards to the left and, and let me actually write that in red because I'll represent this with my red function so x plus pi over 2 and I call it n of x is our new function so where let's say I want to get to negative 1 right if I want to get to negative 1 that means what does that mean that means this part right here has to equal x plus pi root has to equal pi because the cosine of pi, if this whole thing were pi, would be negative 1. So in order to find what x value does that, we would subtract, and there's that movement to the left, pi over 2 from both sides. And that would mean, of course, 1 whole pi minus a half a pi is 1 half pi, or pi over 2. In other words, if we plug in pi over 2 for x, then we get pi over 2 plus pi over 2, that's pi. The cosine of pi is negative 1. Essentially, if we look at our graph, that means at pi over 2 now, here's pi over 2, the cosine is negative 1. Right? It's moved back from here to here. Because the amount that um, the amount that we're adding, essentially, because we're solving for x, we're working backwards and subtracting that pi over 2 to find the x value that works. So I might have rambled a bit here. Sorry if that threw you off. But I wanted you to see several ways of of why this works and how. But the short part is to say, okay, if you add to your input, it goes left. If you subtract from your output, it moves down. And the reverse is also true. If you subtract from your input, if you subtract a positive, it's going to go not to back, it's going to go up to the right, over to the right, excuse me. And then if you add here to the output, the graph would move up. All right, hope that helped.